Tom Hanks flipping out in a cave from the 1982 made-for-TV movie Mazes and Monsters. It's a glimpse into the moral panic surrounding the Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game of the 1980s. So let's roll for initiative. <laughs> Mazes and Monsters is just one of a handful of films that sought to capitalize on the fears that the Dungeons and Dragons role-playing game was a gateway to madness, occult violence, and suicide. Hanks' character winds up insane at the end, completely detached from reality, all thanks to his obsessive gaming. Also consider the 1983 horror film Skullduggery, in which a group of adults, clearly engaged in the most joyless game night of all time, play a little Dungeons and Dragons and descend into a world of supernatural murder. Of of course, these films were just the tip of the exploitation iceberg here. The real heat came from the fundamentalist Christian groups and the advocacy group, BAD. All the hoopla largely stemmed from two tragic incidents. The first being the 1979 disappearance of Michigan State University student James Dallas Egbert III. Suffering from depression and drug addiction, Egbert took to the university utility tunnels and there attempted suicide. Oblivious to this, Egbert's family hired a private investigator to find their son, and the investigator erroneously singled out the Dungeons & Dragons role-playing game as a likely cause of the young man's disappearance. The second episode of note was the 1982 suicide of high school student Irving Lee Pulling. Pulling's mother Patricia sued both the high school principal and the publishers of Dungeons & Dragons, claiming that Irving's death stemmed from a curse placed on her son in a D&D game run by the principal. Both suits were dismissed, but Patricia Pulling continued her crusade against the demonic soul-rotting power of the game through the formation of Bothered About Dungeons & Dragons, or BAD. BAD's message found an audience through conservative Christian groups and ultimately through the mainstream media as well, which was revving up into a moral panic over the perceived but equally erroneous threat of satanic ritual abuse. A moral panic is a viral, widespread unrest sparked by our collective fears about society's direction and fueled by a variety of cultural influences. It never takes much for the flames of such fears to burn out of control, especially when the fires are stoked by trusted voices in the media or the word of experts. One such expert was Thomas Radecki, who argued that just as role-playing serves as a powerful psychotherapy tool, role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons misuse that very power. Like an abused medication, role-playing corrupted impressionable young minds with a world of fantasy, violence, sex, and sorcery. Or that was the accusation at any rate. Luckily for dice-rolling gamers worldwide, the moral panic subsided in the wake of reason. Subsequent studies by the American Association of Suicidology, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Health and Welfare Canada all found no causal link between D&D and suicide. In reality, Dungeons and Dragons has actually proven itself a psychiatric aid of sorts. Sure, you're taking imagined adventurers on a fantastic quest. Yes, there's some violence, and the female monsters have a tendency to look a little sexy in the monster manual. But to play D&D is to engage in a communal, cooperative, creative experience. Psychotherapist Dr. Wayne Blackman even offered offered an account in the American Journal of Psychotherapy detailing his use of Dungeons and Dragons to help a 19-year-old with an obsessive schizoid personality gain better control of his emotional states. So don't be afraid to roll that d20. Watch out for umber hulks, but don't fret over the occult psychological dangers of a good game with friends. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. What, what do you think it is about conspiracy theories that gamers love? This, this is a question that has, it's plagued me. And ever since I started kind of doing more internet than television, mm -hmm. you know, that, that level of interaction with the audience has become so much greater. I've really noticed it. Behold, the video game console. Where did it come from? Meet Ralph Baer, born in Germany in 1922.